Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at a couple of items which have been overloaded and excessively overloaded over a fairly lengthy period of time. And we've actually got a fuse and a circuit breaker. Now the first item we've got here is this thing. And this is actually a fuse carrier out of a consumer unit. And so it's similar to a circuit breaker in shape and style, but it's got the two connections top and bottom. In the front here though it's got a little drawer which will open and inside it has one of these fuses. Now this is a 30 amp variety, other ratings are available. And on this series, which is the BS1361, the physical dimensions of the fuse are different for each of the various ratings. So this is a moderately large one, as it's a 30 amp. Now this came from a shower circuit, and uh, the shower is uh, one of these electric ones that heats up the water as used, so it's a fairly powerful device. And the shower attached to this one was an 8.5 kilowatt. And 8.5 kilowatts at uh, 240 volts is in the sort of order of around 35 or 36 amps or so. Now pretty obviously 36 is a lot more than 30. And the fuse in this case has got excessively hot and has actually damaged this fuse carrier. Now fuses which have been covered in other videos do not instantly fail once the current goes above the rating. So this one, if the current got to say 31 amps, it's not going to instantly fail. All that happens is as you increase the current beyond the rating, the little bit of wire inside heats up, and when it gets to a certain amount of temperature, it then will melt and disconnect the circuit. So you can actually overload these by quite a bit before they actually fail. And the only difference is that uh, if you overload it by a small amount, it takes a long time to fail. And if you overload it by a lot, it takes less and less time to fail. So in this case it was overloaded by a range of about 20% and this has caused the fuse to get extremely hot but not fail straight away. This was made worse by the fact that the electric shower of course was only in use for a fairly short period each time, probably sort of five ten minutes or something. So the fuse was sort of heating up in there, not actually breaking, and then of course the shower was turned off and then it would cool down again. And this has been going on for the best part of a year. Now this thing here is supposed to open and the fuse is contained within. But as you can see here there's a, a bit of a problem here because the insides are completely broken and destroyed and they've also gone dark brown which is where the uh, massive overheating has occurred. And you can see this piece here is all charred and blackened. That's essentially where the fuse would have fitted. And then you're supposed to uh, shove that closed and uh, obviously it uh, works then. But in this case of course it's completely broken and has in fact melted and cracked a big hole in the side of the unit here, which of course has basically destroyed the entire thing. But of course this was actually in service for around a year or so, and has been working apparently fairly well for that time, but of course uh, over that time it's been getting gradually worse and worse until it finally broke and destroyed itself. And uh, this is uh, unfortunately not that uncommon to find, of course it should never happen, but what of course has happened in this case is someone has obviously fitted in the past probably a 7 kilowatt shower which would be fine on a 30 amp circuit. Someone's come along and just put a new shower in and not uh, thinking or realising they've just stuck a more powerful item on there. It appeared to work at least once so uh, that was the end of it as far as they were concerned but of course shoving a 36 amp load through a 30 amp fuse this is the kind of results that you're going to get. I would say it's extensively damaged here, the insides are completely wrecked and uh, we were actually only called out to uh, have a look at this issue when the thing had actually completely destroyed itself and wasn't working anymore. So uh, that one uh, has of course been replaced now with a 40 amp, actually a circuit breaker in that case as those fuse things are uh, somewhat difficult to get hold of now. And the uh, second item we've got here is a circuit breaker and as it says on the front here if it was used for a lift, in this case it's a 50 amp circuit breaker and it's also a type C. And this was for a lift in a block of flats and this had actually been in service for around seven years and uh, worked fine until fairly recently when it turned out that if more than two people got in the lift the uh, circuit breaker would trip and of course the people were then stuck in the lift until someone came along and uh, turned on the power. And uh, what's happened here is that uh, one testing this with the uh, lift actually running with nobody in it, it turned out that the normal running current for this lift is in the order of 65 amps. So considerably more than the uh, 50 amp rating we've got here, but of course as with the fuse here what's inside is a little strip. Now we've taken these apart in uh, other videos and the little strip basically heats up 
and so as with a fuse if there's a moderate overload it heats up fairly slowly if there's a large overload it heats up quickly and uh, well, after it gets to a certain temperature then of course it will trip and of course a lift is only in use for a fairly short periods simply going from one floor to another and of course in this case it was basically heating up quite a lot eventually they were sort of uh, Sort of 15 amps plus over its uh, actual rating but not long enough to actually cause it to trip and uh, latterly and of course in the last month or so this thing has presumably become damaged or worn inside so now even a uh, overload for a modest period of time will cause it to trip and of course it was doing it with more people in the lift because more people means uh, more load on the motor so it probably draws uh, somewhat more current in that situation but uh, yeah this thing uh, the lift was empty and it was running sort of in this sort of 64 65 amps range clearly massively over the 50 amp rating of the device so that was obviously installed incorrectly from new now we're just going to have a look inside these things so we just need to drill out the uh, rivets on this circuit breaker this uh, fuse carrier bizarrely doesn't appear to have any uh, rivets or fixing so uh, just see if we can uh, pry that apart and see what we've got inside now first of all is the circuit breaker so just have to drill out the various pins that secure it together because obviously these aren't designed to be opened and the actual strip which heats up is down here at the bottom and it's this one that goes across here so basically the current flows through and uh, once it's over a certain value it will heat up enough to bend and then uh, trip the mechanism and I haven't done a video on these things before and uh, if we look inside here we can see the grey plastic here and in this area here we can see that there's a considerable amount of brown colouring there which is presumably where it's been uh, overheating over a significant period of time and uh, the actual wiring and things do seem to be in fairly reasonable condition here's a closer look and you can see this sort of dark uh, brown yellow business going on in here so this is the uh, strip here which would obviously bend and trip the mechanism so these have come out of place a bit but uh, basically it's uh, on in the up position makes the contact here and then in the off position it basically springs apart now it's not entirely clear whether this is due to the arc here because this had tripped a number of times before the uh, thing was actually removed and a proper rated one was installed but certainly there's a considerable amount of yellowing here which would suggest uh, overheating from that and uh, certainly it's uh, no longer in serviceable condition let's say they got to the point where literally more than one or two people in the lift it would pretty much trip out every single time so uh, although it doesn't look desperately physically damaged the strip here has obviously become overheated to the point where it now bends uh, more easily than it did previously and therefore the thing will trip out at uh, considerably lower currents than it did before and so we've seen uh, a video on the inside of these uh, previously so uh, we'll link that into the usual place so we won't go into the details of what's inside this is the fuse carrier and it's not totally clear how this is put together it might just be uh, sort of welded but uh, in any case we'll uh, see if we can just pry into this and uh, hopefully get it apart now there's not a lot in these because literally it's just two contacts that uh, have the fuse between them so it's just basically power in at one end and out at the other and the little hinged drawer there is just so you can open it and insert the fuse from outside when it requires replacement now the fuse is actually blown although this is a fairly recent one it wasn't the one that was in there for a long time because the persons that live there had already attempted to replace it themselves and we can see inside here that the little drawer mechanism here has been totally destroyed and it's gone this uh, horrible brown burnt color so this is a clear indication this has been overheating for an extended period of time and so the entire thing is now just gone uh, brittle and it's now completely useless and here are the two contacts basically sort of a spring arrangement so the I'll just pry that one up a bit but the fuse would basically sit in between those sort of in there like that so it is literally just power in through the fuse and power out at the other side now these of course would have been fairly shiny copper originally or something similar and you see they've gone very dark and uh, in terms of the springiness you see there isn't really a lot left there they just basically bend into whatever shape you want due to the heat damage you see it's softening the metal and even these bits here i think these are actually copper or they uh, something like copper when they were in working order and this bit here is some sort of spring to uh, secure it in position 
And again, the same sort of deal here. We've got the inner copper contacts and some outer loop of a spring on there. And you can see on the side here the extensive damage to the plastic. And there's actually a crack there and it will uh, break through fairly easily. So it's just gone uh, extremely brittle. And you can also see some burn marks here where it's obviously damaged the plastic on that side as well. And so this thing uh, was only noticed when it had actually failed and you see it's already basically bulging on the side of this uh, item here. So clearly it's been overheating to an extensive amount for a very long period of time. I'm not sure when the shower itself was installed but the uh, thing actually had a date inside of 2015 so probably uh, a year or so ago as this video has been made in 2016. So uh, that's basically what happens when you uh, use things incorrectly and in this case someone just shoved a higher rated shower onto an existing circuit without actually checking or even uh, necessarily caring whether it was the correct rating or not. So I thought they had a couple of failed devices. They're both Hager which is uh, just a coincidence they're not from the same installation and they're not uh, in any way related. And there's nothing actually wrong with the uh, things themselves, it was purely down to the fact that they were used incorrectly as the items that were attached to them or the loads were far too high for the protective devices. Uh, this is another example of things that uh, just because something works doesn't mean it's going to continue working because in that case of course they had the shower been installed for over a year. The problem only shows up uh, fairly recently and the case of the one for the lift that was actually installed around seven years ago and of course the uh, problem with that breaker has only just showed up. And uh, installations of that are supposed to be tested or inspected every 10 years and of course that one was seven years ago from new so it was done wrongly from the start. Nobody's actually had a look at it since then and again it only showed up when uh, things started to fail and of course uh, people were trapped inside the lift. And uh, say so these are unfortunately uh, not that uncommon in terms of uh, failures like this occurring. Another common one is where you get the uh, fused connection units with the 13 amp fuse in to supply fixed appliances and the common one with those is where it's been used to supply things like storage heaters which should not be supplied through those because many storage heaters are actually rated in the sort of 16 amp range which of course uh, is more than the 13 amp thing and a similar thing will happen with those in that the fuse will basically overheat the front will uh, melt or char in some fashion and then the fuse will fail and then of course the user comes to replace the fuse and finds that they can't get it out of there or when they attempt to open the little compartment for the fuse it just crumbles away and breaks and is then completely destroyed. So that's it for this particular video and until next time thanks for watching.